another domain where um, flow becomes fully developed, and one that is arguably of more engineering practical interest, is the flow in a pipe. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that. So fully developed flow in a pipe has a name, Hagen Poise flow. Um, they've got to, I guess the guys that solved it. And um, you know, as with the plate, uh, it's going to have the flow is going to enter. We don't know what kind of velocity profile it has entering the pipe. Perhaps uniform, perhaps not. There's going to be some kind of entrance region whose length we do not yet know. We'll be figuring that out soon. Um, and then eventually it will become fully developed as it does between as flow does between two plates. Uh, but just the same way in a pipe, it will eventually become fully developed. And it is defined as fully developed just as it was before, that the velocity uh, will no longer change in the direction of flow, which in this case as drawn is the z direction. So none of the velocities will change uh, in the z direction once, they're full, once the flow has become fully developed. The analysis of this, of course, makes sense to do in cylindrical coordinates. So I will show you the uh, Navier-Stokes equations in cylindrical coordinates. You will get to see them this one time. We will not really be using cylindrical coordinates uh, for our Navier-Stokes equations, except in this particular problem, uh, which of course is extremely well suited to it. And as we know and anticipate, it's going to simplify quite a bit in the fully developed regime, just as it did in the flow between the plates. So the Navier-Stokes equations and cylindrical coordinates look like this. They are quite complicated. Of course, they're quite complicated in any coordinate scheme, these nonlinear differential equations. Uh, but in cylindrical coordinates, they take on even a bit more uh, complexity. So that's a theta. So we have, I'll read this out to you after I write it all down for you. Um, I know you can't see anything while I'm writing, so perhaps I should have written it in advance. But anyway, the left-hand side, rho, dv, dvr, dt. So vr is going to be the radial velocity here. Uh, vr times dvr, dr, v theta, uh, dvr, d theta, with an r underneath, minus v theta squared over r, uh, plus, uh, uh, one, plus vz times dvr, dz. And that's all equal to minus dpdr, the pressure gradient in the radial, radial direction, plus viscosity times the second uh, derivatives terms, or the Laplacian of in the cylindrical coordinates. So um, the right-hand side of that equation, minus dpdr mu, viscosity times all these uh, other terms, d squared vr dr squared, plus 1 over r dvdr, minus vr over r squared, plus 1 over r squared dvr d theta squared, minus 2 over r squared dv theta d theta d theta, and then plus dvr dz squared. Um, main point here really is that moving to slender coordinates really does create a fair amount of complexity. Uh, you see that, you know, the, the VR equation has V theta in it in multiple places. Uh, it's because, of course, you know, the angles and the distances are very tightly connected when you're from the radial, you know, farther from the radius. Uh, you know, a lot of things change as theta changes because you're farther, you're moving things are moving faster if they're moving in theta than they would be if they were smaller R's. Um, so, yeah, I say mostly just to take away that you know, if you're going to transition to cylindrical coordinates, you need to be very careful um, because the equations, while they have certain similarities, really are quite different um, from what they are in XYZ Cartesian coordinates. We will look uh, in the Z equation as well because we're going to need the Z equation. This is where the action is happening, of course, the direction of flow. Uh, so rho uh, dVz is our velocity in the Z direction uh, plus vr dvz dr plus v theta over r dvz d theta plus vz dvz dz. 
uh, and then that's all equal to the expected minus dp dz, or at least hoping you expect that at this point, plus this viscosity term, uh, d squared vz, dr squared plus 1 over r dvz, dr plus 1 over r squared uh, times d squared dz, d theta squared plus d squared vz, dz squared. All right, so that's our Z equation, our Z momentum equation. Uh, I think I got it right, but if you're going to really use it, of course, look it up in a book. Um, but at any rate, we'll work from this. Yeah, this looks okay to me. And I'm not going to bother to write the theta momentum equation. Uh, we're going to recognize that you know, the theta equation is, is stuff happening in this direction, as if the pipe, if flow were swirling around in the pipe. We're going to assume that in this fully developed regime, uh, there is no swirling, no swirling flow. So unless you have a uh, flow down a rifle barrel, where of course swirling is caused intentionally by the rifling in the barrel, uh, we will have, we will assume the flow does not swirl. Uh, so that means that all the theta velocities are equal to zero, and there is no change in anything uh, in the theta direction. So d anything d theta is going to be zero. That is, there's no reason to think that uh, there's any difference uh, anywhere or in a circular direction within this pipe. So traveling around a constant radius circle, we expect everything to be the same. Uh, finally, we're going to need mass conservation, of course. DVR, DR plus V over R, R plus 1 over R, DV theta, D theta, uh, plus DVZ, DZ. And that's all equal to zero. So that's our continuity equation in cylindrical coordinates uh, for incompressible flow. So that's it for the equations. Next lecture, we'll uh, take a look at how to simplify those and try to get a solution.